when a component accepts as a property a function that is returning an JSX element, we call such property a render prop. And I believe that render props is one of the most underrated patterns in React application. It was very popular back in the days, especially at the time of the class components. Since the introduction of hooks, it kind of became easier to separate the concerns between the rendering and the logic, since you can just, if you want to encapsulate certain type of logic, you can just put it in the custom hook. So then it appeared there is no much need for render props anymore, but still I think there are situations when it can be extremely useful to know this pattern. In my application, I found a usage when I can combine the render props with the hooks in order to give myself a good developer experience. So this is a virtual list that utilizes the render props and the hooks under the hood. This is another virtual list that also utilizes the same approach. And finally, this is the third scenario. So how does it look under the hood? Well, the first one looks as simple as this. There is a fixed virtualized list component that accepts this interesting thing that is the function as a child. Here's another example of the same virtualized list component that also accepts the function that describes how to render one row basically. And then finally, again, a third usage of the same virtualized list. And if we look under the hood of this virtual list, and if we look under the hood of virtual list, what it does is that actually it uses the custom hook from the TanStack virtual library called use virtualizer. So in order to use this hook, what you need to do, you need to create an element that will be uh, wrapping a content that will overflow and can be virtualized. This is the component that will become very, very large because of all those thousands of items inside of it. This is the component that not gonna be large, but it will consume all the available space of the parent container. And then inside all of these things that takes care of virtualizing kind of container wrappers, I run through all the items and call a children property, because I know that the children property will be a function. And it's a function here that returns an item and some auxiliary properties like key, for example. Again, a function that accepts another some item from the list and additional properties. And the most important part here is that I believe that for my application, since I use so many different but very similar virtual lists, if I would just go with a React hook, I would need to basically implement this functionality about wrapping things with like parent containers, figuring out like how much they need to, like doing all of this, like providing these containers, calling this, basically repeating the same functionality of utilizing this use virtualizer custom hook. So instead I wrapped it into my component the way I wanted to see it and then just use the power of the render props to have my interface extremely simple. Like this is a little bit advanced scenario because here I lazy load data from the backend. But in this case, there is a fixed amount of items. And again, in this case, it's again, a fixed amount of items. It's just a lot of items. There are just a lot of items. And if I haven't built this component, I would need to do this wrapping and providing this ref and all of this shenanigans to, to build this virtualizing kind of experience. But now interface is as simple as just use a virtualized list component and then pass a function as a child. And this passing function as a child is another very interesting application of the render props pattern. So the render props pattern, when you pass a function as a child is an example of inversion of control pattern. What is inversion of control? Inversion of control is a pattern where you allow the library or a framework 
to call your application's code. So let's say there is an application and then there is a library called console and then this library contains a function called log. So normally inside your application, you would just call this log function from the console and this is the normal flow of your application. But sometimes we could benefit from library being able to call our code so one way to achieve this is through callbacks. Let's say there is another library called FS and this library has a function called read file that accepts a callback that will be a function that accepts file or error as an argument and then returns some, some sort of a result. So what happens is that our application can call this read file function but our application doesn't have access to this file or error. It just can create this function with our application internal logic, that logic specific to our... So it can call, so our application can provide this read file with a function that accepts file and error, the file or error as an argument, and then provide a body in terms like, it can create a logic specific to our application maybe thanks to the closure with an access to the internal variables inside the application and etc and give a possibility for a fast library to then call our application code literally and then what happens in this situation since this code inside this function belongs to our application but it will be an fs library through its read file function that will call our application code we call this approach inversion of control because we're inverting a normal control of things. We're giving the control over our application piece of code to the FS library. And so exactly the same thing happens with render props when we pass function as a child. So now if you haven't seen this trick before, you will know that not only you can encapsulate the logic using the custom hooks, which is often favorable these days, but you also have the possibility to encapsulate sometimes logic using render props pattern or even combine the two, like maybe I did, maybe you find your own application for that because sometimes it can be really, really useful to know all those basic React patterns. Thank you for watching and until the next time.